Virginia. Vegeta. 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 Sha! What is up, Joe Crew? It is me, Joku DMD, and I'm here with a deck profile of Dragon Ball Super Card Game cards printed in Japan. This is Vegeta! Vegeta! But before I get into that, I know what you're thinking. Joku, what happened to your face? Face! Well, my mustache and I got in a little bit of a disagreement and we couldn't come to terms on things. Couldn't exactly see eye to eye, if you know what I mean. And uh, we had to part ways for now, but it will return. It always has a way of finding its way back on to my lip but for now it's out of here if this is your guys first time here and you want to see shrippums and deck profiles and dragon ball super card game content on a weekly basis make sure to smush that subscription button and if you're a returning member of the joe crew thank you for coming by and let's get into tarbles brothers deck profile vegeta this is vegeta he is a red sand leader and he is practicing the valsalva maneuver if you aren't familiar with that you can familiarize yourself with that on a quick google search what the heck i think my shirt changed virginia vegeta 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 this is vegeta prince of the vegetables vegeta he's pretty good so when he swings you draw a card and he gains 5k for the battle you have two awakening conditions so you can either awaken when you're at four or less life and untap two energy or you can awaken when you have a unison with a specified cost of two in play and you can take your life down to five life and flip this card over and get two energy back so pretty good pretty good stuff and on the awaken side when he swings he gives a unison with specified cost of two double strike which is pretty strong and he draws when he swings he also has a spirit boost one once per turn you can remove a marker from your unison when your opponent attacks a unison you can negate the attack and give your unison six thousand power for the duration of the turn so it's pretty Pretty strong to defend your unison it makes your unison 21k for the turn usually because you're playing 15k unisons in this deck so they're gonna have to combo up quite a bit to deal damage to them so it's a pretty pretty strong skill and it's basically a free negate and you're usually gonna go into your turn with three markers on your unison so i'm gonna go through this deck kind of in plays and talk about the turn plays how i would imagine playing it and how you can play it but there's definitely versatility between these so take it as you will and definitely you know do your own build and make what works for you so i'm playing four of the sun gohan ultimate s and I think this card is a great turn one play. That's why I'm running four of them. The reason why is because it searches your top five and you can look for a universe seven or a unison with specified cost of two. So you can grab Piccolo or Kaba or your Vegeta or your Goku or your Tien or your Tien super combo. There's a lot of targets in this deck to search off of him. So he's a great turn one play just to kind of get what you need in your hand. And a lot of times people will go to try and kill him because of his limit one draw when you combo with a skillless. So this guy has an auto basically when he's in your battle area if you combo with a skillless card from your hand You get to draw a card which allows you to filter your deck and there's another card in your deck that grabs a skillless So the three of them kind of work together So a lot of people would probably try and target him and get rid of him and I don't really care that much if he stays on the board I'm kind of happier actually if they try and use their energy to try and kill him because it's just Wasted resources on them So I think four of him is really good for a turn one search and it's also a beautiful looking card that looks great in your energy if you want to charge it i'm running two tn desperate multi-form this card i think is pretty strong i still need more practice playing it but this is also a good turn one play because it's just a play one draw one and when he's in your battle area defensively you can combo him and activate his auto by paying two energy which you can see right here costs two and basically you get to create four multi-form tokens which each have 10k attack power and 5k combo power so you basically get 20k free combo power on your board and you get to play tokens which is really fun when he's in play and a lot of times on turn two, you will have the energy to combo him off if you play your unison and awaken, but I'll explain that later. So I think he's also an ideal turn one play. He's also good on turn two as well. Just getting him on your board is good to get him on the board and draw for his auto. I'm playing four Piccolo Jr., Descendant of the King. This unison is just so good. The plus one draw is huge. It keeps your hand size up. And this unison has an auto skill that says when your opponent activates a counter skill, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards with 15,000 power or less and KO it which is just really really strong because especially with the evolution booster negates now when people are activating those negates and creating the blocker tokens he basically just kills the token there's also a lot of battle cards that are negating off of energy costs so when a battle card negates off an energy cost he can usually pop the card when it comes into play because a lot of those are 15k or less and the draw one is just really strong so for this guy and 
he's also searchable off the Gohan, which is nice. Since we're playing red and we'll have you red unisons with three or more markers on the turn that we play them, King Piccolo, the new ruler, is kind of a necessary evil in this deck. Uh, I think the card's a little ridiculous, but just having that turn pressure of a 20k double strike that can't be blocked uh, is really good. And it also helps control your opponent's unisons because you really need to keep your opponent's unisons off the board. The more you can pressure your opponent's unisons and keep your opponent's board clear, the better you can play this deck because I've designed it kind of to play the long game and not just win in like two or three turns. I kind of like going to turn four, five, and six with this deck. And he really helps the board pressure. He can pressure life also, but I usually use him just to like wipe unisons out. Vegeta! Spirit Mentor. This card is so good. It's so gorgeous. Also, this is the winner stamp card. I'm lucky enough to have three of them, but this card is amazing in this deck. It's really good because it can actually play your Kaba unison with three markers on it. Now, normally you're going to have Piccolo out and you're going to keep Piccolo out, but in the event that they kill Piccolo and you need to reestablish your unison, you you just play him and you're going to have a unison with four markers that turn because he's going to play the unison with three markers and then you can plus one on that unison and if they decide to respond with some counter skill to that unison you can just kill something because this guy has the flex so they could respond to counter his skill to play the unison but the other option on his play is you can just minus something 30k ignoring barrier so he's amazing for removal he also has a spirit boost skill that when he's in rest mode you can spirit boost one and give your leader 5k for the battle so you can kind of pump your leader for a combo off of him with spirit boost which also would give you access to your fully free play spirit boost but we don't play that in this deck because it comes out defensively but a three drop barrier with deflect that is 19k is a good investment because of how much utility he has that comes off of him so i think this card is a really great turn three play and a lot of times you can play your unison on turn two and you don't awaken when you play your unison you just leave your unison out there let your opponent waste their resources on your unison turn three play him play a unison awaken on turn three and then you have two energy back to either combo off a of Tien Shin Han multiform or play one of your Donna Divinities or so on. There's a lot of other options and we'll go into some of those, but this is a great, great card and a wonderful turn three play. Of course, just off the Vegeta, I'm playing two of the Kaba Spirit Resonance. This unison is pretty good. It's not like insanely broken or anything. It has a plus one that minuses 10K on something. So I think the draw is more useful off the Piccolo unison. However, this has an interesting minus six skill. Uh, it's auto is if your if opponent's life is at three or more and they attack your leader card, you can minus six on him send him to the drop area and deal a damage to your opponent and when you send him to the drop area limit one when he leaves the unison area he'll give your leader 5k for the turn so when this unison dies and even if they just pressure this unison and kill it he's going to give your leader 5,000 power for the turn making your leader uh, 20,000 which is more for them to combo over so you know if they play something like a boonie and you manage to sack this guy off the board, they're gonna have to combo up into every one of their tokens to try and deal damage on your leader. So I think this unison's pretty good. I do think Piccolo is better, but it's nice to have the target for Vegeta. And it's also nice to have the utility to try and pump your leader a little bit if you need to off of his auto. This card's insanely good. Uh, it's almost like an engine within itself. Two energy is a little expensive in this deck, but the utility that you get out of this guy is just crazy because when he comes in, he can give something 5K. So he can give himself 5K. And then on top of that, when he swings, he gains 5K. And he also grabs a skill from your deck when he swings. So if you get this guy out and you have Gohan on board and you grab that Skillless and you combo with the Skillless, you're essentially cycling two cards out of your deck because you're grabbing the Skillless off him, you're comboing the Skillless and drawing a card off of Gohan. So you're just seeing a bunch more cards and you're getting this guy to be a lot stronger and you're opening up windows to play other cards because another one of him can play. If you have two or more battle cards in your combo area you just tap two energy and play this guy and he also can't be removed from your battle area for the turn so stuff like bojack isn't going to harm him um he's just a really really strong card and at worst he's a 5k combo so i think this is a great card to run definitely want to see it any searchable off gohan also I'm just running three skillless, uh, one Piccolo and two Goku because th they're not super necessary in this deck, but if you get Divine Presence out and you swing with him, you wanna be able to plus off him to find one of these in your deck. And if Gohan's on board, then you're gonna be able to combo him off, like I said, and draw off Gohan. So he's pretty, these are useful. You don't need a ton of them. So I think three is perfectly fine. And of course, they're also just 5K combos if you need them. Now, this was my Sensei Miguel's Spice. Uh, I was showed him the list last night and he told me to run two of these 
threes i think this is a great card this card is really really cool it's a similar kind of thing you can just pay two energy and play this guy during your battle step if you have a unison uh with energy cost of two in play so basically the way this guy works is you combo him and when you have a unison specified cost of two in play you just tap two energy and play him he's a 20k double strike and he really pressures your opponent because if your opponent activates a counter skill you can choose something ignoring barrier and minus at 30k which is just really strong so they kind of have to figure out how to deal with this guy before they activate a counter and if you play this correctly you can really pressure your opponent into some difficult spots um running two of the starter deck goku spear boost warrior I, I think this card is pretty good like worst case scenario on turn four if you just need to put the pressure on you can tap four for this guy he's a dual attack double strike and he is deflect so he's a relatively safe play he also has a spirit boost that when he gets leaves your battle area you can spirit boost off your unison and bring him back into play uh if he were to be ko'd or removed by a skill so that's pretty strong and uh the 20k double strike dual attack is just it's it's good and you can you know it, a lot of times you can can actually wait until turn four to awaken in this deck because of how much defensive pressure you can create and how much your unison punishes your opponent for countering and stuff like that but normally you're going to be awakened by turn four and if you need to cast him you can he also can come out on turn five sometimes or even if you go to turn six uh it's a little bit of a risky play on turn four but sometimes you just need to push for it when you see the opening and he will get in there because that dual attack 20k double strike is just pretty strong for the unison free counters, I'm just running three Yamcha. Yamcha's great, hit stuff, minuses. There's a lot of negging in this deck, so you can uh, neg stuff and just kill it if you neg it enough. So Yamcha is a really good option for that. His skill is linked to his counter, so if you do hit something with deflect, it's not gonna minus that. And you also wanna make sure that you're always playing him in window two. So you wanna play him in counter window two because the card will already be on the board and then his counterplay skill will minus 15K on two battle cards that are on your opponent's field. I'm playing one S as Vegeta exploiting weakness and I think one is fine I really haven't even used him but to have the option to have a three energy counterplay to just wipe your opponent's board is pretty strong and it also buffs your leader uh, by 5k so he essentially becomes a three energy counterplay and when your opponent plays a card you can play him and everything 20k or less is just gonna get negged and I think negging is better than KOing if you neg stuff you can kill things that have indestructible which is really strong and it just removes by uh game mechanic so it's good to neg cards if you can uh and i think this counter plays great but i'll probably put another one on the sideboard and if it's a matchup where he's really necessary i'll just side that in this is the evolution booster negate testing the opposition uh, this is definitely by far the best one because it has combo power so red is the only one that has combo power um basically the way this negate works is when your life is at five or less instead of paying two for it you can take a life to pay the cost of this and you create a blocker token this negate is just really good it's great for protecting your unison it's great for late game when your opponent just has like two swings left or something and you can negate one and block one um, just a really versatile excellent negate and i think three is a good number in this deck because a lot of times you are going into your defensive steps without energy playing two king vegeta's imposing presence i had this at more earlier but i think i mean one it's just a gorgeous looking piece of cardboard so this is my energy i'm not mad about that at all but this card is really good late game especially when they're kind of going in and they've built a board and they're just going to start swinging with stuff you just either pay one for it and minus 10k whatever's swinging and then for the rest of the turn everything they swing with they have to give minus 5k he also has the option of just paying for him by dropping a card so late game like if you have two of these in hand and your life is at three or less there's no harm in paying for this and just dropping the other one because you're not going to use it again probably so you're just going to go into your next turn and hopefully they survive by the negging that some of the cards are going to receive and especially if you yamcha their board and two of their battle cards already have minus 15k once you negate with him you might just kill the thing they're swinging with uh and then for the duration of the turn they may be in danger of swinging with stuff that's just going to die because they have to give it in minus 5k i think this card is really really cool difference in status is an awesome counter again this is one that i saw my sensei miguel using and i was like whoa that is a spicy so i put two of these in here uh it's a spirit boost negate you activate it at counter timing uh it's zero cost and you can just minus something 5k so if they're going in with like a little weenie or something and it's 5k you can just negate with this and it'll just kill it but if they're going in with something bigger and say you've already yamcha and it's at like 25k and you have a unison with five markers on it which is pretty common in this deck you can just spirit boost your unison sack your unison off and kill the thing that's swinging 
This also synergizes really well with Kaba because if Kaba's at like four markers, which he usually is, you can spirit boost Kaba off the board, give it whatever's attacking minus 20k, and then your leader's also going to gain 5k off of Kaba's auto. So this you, this negate just has a lot of versatility in the deck. It's a really fun negate to play, and it's nice to sneak a little Jiren in here. What he I'm running two TN super combos. It, super combo's not amazing, but it's searchable off Gohan. So if you are playing Gohan turn one and you see this, you can grab it. It's nice to just grab a super combo in hand uh always has 10k value so i guess things like the kid goku dragon fist this one will still give you combo power whereas a lot of others kind of get ruined by that card so it's nice to have something that's base 10 and then if your life's at four or less you draw one raditz sand youth just to get dead cards out of your hand uh if you have something that you're not going to use or you know you have an extra card that you don't have the energy for you can just cycle it under and draw two cards he's also great for getting rid of unisons we are running six unisons so to be able to bottom deck a unison and draw some cards that may have combo power is often really useful Gine is awesome uh this also was a little tip i got from my sensei miguel i think this might be the frank castle special i don't know i i heard that somebody is doing this and and one of these is just awesome because this card gives gives another card 6k that's in your combo area so this essentially becomes an 11k super combo and you get to draw a card which is great so getting that extra pump like that extra 1k you'd be surprised how many games that comes in and just seals the deal because your opponent can't get over that extra 1k or if you're defending you just need 1k more to get that defensive step so she's really strong in uh comboing and i think one is good because it's really a late game thing that you're doing either to push or defend but she's not searchable and raditz isn't searchable but having these guys searchable off of the go Han is pretty useful. These are the sel Collector's Selection Frieza Death Ball. I think this card looks gorgeous. It's such a, every card from that looks just so dang good. So I just had to put them in because they're just great looking cards. And this card also really comes in handy because you're gonna pump your leader by 15K and you can minus 10K on an attacking card. So that really comes in use, especially when you're activating Yamcha and say like, you know, your opponent is at 10K because you Yamcha them, it's a, it, say it's a 40K card, they're swinging with a secret rare and you Yamcha the play of that card, the cards now at 25 and then when they swing with it you spirit boost minus three off of your counter and give it another minus 15 so it's at 10 and then you freeze his death ball in the battle step because they're going to be comboing up to try and save that thing and make the attack go through and then if you just get its base power to zero everything that they combo just goes to the drop and it also protects your leader it's a 15k so really really good card comes in clutch so much and oftentimes on your defensive turn four you're gonna have two energy up to use this and you have difference of status that gives you access to nagging a card so this really gets in there late game and that's why i'm running two of them of course, the best card in the game. No, I won't let it end like this. Bad Rock, Dad Rock, so good. This card is just a finisher within itself. And especially if you have the extra space for Champa and you throw a Champa on him, 35K double strike. Plus he's, he's dual attack, so you just play him for free. You just banish your drop area, come in with him, swing once for 25K. If they block it and they're a two life, just get cheeky with it, swing again, put another double strike on it and just go for game. It just such a good card. He deserves a spot in every deck or at least every side deck, I think. The only thing I would side out for him is Secret Identity. I think there's a lot of matchups right now where Secret Identity is more valuable because you want to get things out of your opponent's board and into their warp area because like things like Jiren, all those one drops can keep playing out of their drop area. So if you hit Secret ID on Jiren, it's going to do a lot more value than Bardock. And that's really one of the only matches I would side him out. But this is just such a good card and a finisher within itself. So I love this card. And of course, the Secret Rare I'm playing is Goku Frieza. I have to play this card. I announced it. This is such an honor to show this card. I've pulled it. I love it. Evan also pulled one. Shout out to you, Evan, if you're watching this. This card is just so fun to play. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, it doesn't have deflect or you can counter it. You can do this. Well, like here's the reality of this deck is that you're putting so much pressure on your opponent. And if you're playing defensively and you pressure them down by turn five, they're not really going to have many resources. And in the event that you think they do have resources, well, turn four, you just play this guy. And if they have energy up, you look at their hand, see what they have. If they have a counter to this card, you either just take it out or you don't play the card and you play it the next turn if you can play through turn five. So this card's great. I just have one just to see my opponent's hand later 
late game just so I can protect from playing this card because pretty much everything else in the deck has deflect. So the way that Broly Crown works is if your opponent has two or more energy in active mode, you can play him and uh, look at your opponent's hand and remove a card 20,000 power or less and put in their drop area, which most of their counter plays are going to be. The only decks that are really trouble for this are yellow and blue and yellow and blue aren't necessarily huge right now. I think yellow is back on the rise and this card could get rested on play and in which case you'd only get to activate main and do this the final skill it could also get its effects negated with the the holy hexagon scr the siblings absorbed one i mean i think that's one of the best scrs ever printed but there aren't that many things that counter this uh if you're playing against yellow or blue you just have to be careful you have to side another burly crown and you have to look at their hand and make sure that they don't have answers to this and if they do you just don't play it there's so much other gas in the deck that you can play and all the other gas in the deck has deflect so it's not really a bad thing to have this in the deck and if you can play it and they're at two life they're basically dead because they can't counter they can't block and the likelihood that they're going to block out of two 40k swings is pretty low and then you can just deal that last damage by activate main so that's been the deck profile. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys try this deck. It's super, super fun. Uh, the TPs aren't 100% necessary. You can definitely build it with other stuff in those five slots. You don't even need the Cabot Unison. Um, you can put other things in there and build it and spice it up and make it your own list and have fun with it. I hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile. If this is your first time here and you wanna see deck profiles and Shrippums and Dragon Ball Super Card Game goodness, make sure to smush that subscription button. And if you're a returning member of the Joe Crew, thanks for coming by and checking this out. I am a dentist. I can't end the episode that doing a dental tooth tip so my dental tooth tip of the day would be floss every day don't let a day go by where it doesn't happen and if you're afraid that your gums are bleeding every time that you're flossing and you're like oh i shouldn't floss because it makes my gums bleed well that's actually a good thing because you're cleaning out the bacteria from the spaces in the gum tissue it takes about two weeks for that to heal so you're going to be bleeding for about two weeks it's going to happen but once you get in that daily routine of flossing your teeth your gums won't bleed anymore they'll get healthy your teeth will stay in your mouth a longer time and you'll be able to enjoy food and smile and laugh at jokes for the rest of your life. I'm Joku DMD, and I'll see you guys next time.